Hi everyone, I hope you're good guy. Welcome to a new video. So today I'm gonna show you each part of my Dub Techno number three Ableton template. So this template has been made during my live stream session. So if you want, you can go check out the live stream. I will put the link in on my description. It's on my Audio React YouTube channel. And if you wanna come around for the next one, you can come and ask some questions, see myself creating music live. So yeah, today I'm gonna explain each part of the template, how I made the sound, why. And next week we will focus more on on the global arrangement, all the automation I've made, mixing and mastering. So first, let's have a listen how it sounds. So it's kind of ambient uh, dub techno track. Probably the main IFD of the template and so just one thing you can hear there is some noise uh, I will come back to this later but I'm just gonna activate the gate this way we're not gonna hear it I will explain to you why I have to do that later on but yeah let's get started with the drum so drum is pretty simple usually in the techno you don't have much kicker hats and sometimes a snare but damn it so I have this kick which the original sample was quite aggressive kick but obviously you can see I apply a low pass filter and I pitch it down 13 semitones semi semi to have this very heavy and low uh, kind of kick that's the vibes I wanted to have for this dub techno track so and then it's just a bit of EQ and Just get rid of everything which is under 30 and boost a little bit here and this is just to help a little bit the click there is a little click it's just helping this to get out because obviously it's a low pass filter on the kick so it's very muffled and you doesn't really hear the top and mid range but sometimes you still need a little bit to have to sometimes help you kick cut through the mix so that's why I And then we have our hats, which is a closer hat, but you can see it's kind of having this shaker effect. If you check the sample and you check in terms of milliseconds, you can see like there is an attack of around 20 milliseconds, and that's usually uh, something I do if I want to transform a sound into a shaker. I just bring the attack around 20 to 30 milliseconds. That's why it's creating this kind of shaker effect. And in terms of process, it's just saturation. Make it a bit lighter, louder. <clears throat> so this EQ, I'm gonna put the reverb first, and it's quite big reverb. But usually, I want for a close I hat, I will go probably more like this, like a kind of a room. But this one, I wanted something a bit longer because this kind of ambient track is is nice to have this house which is like breathing into a lot of reverbs. So, and then I use this EQ. It's more like a sound design EQ. It was. I didn't plan it at first, but then when I was mixing, I said, oh, like, let's exaggerate it. And it was kind of sounding now nice with the rest of the mix. So let me. On the end, on the overall mix, the effect is subtle. If you listen with the whole mix, it's not a crazy processing, even though it looks like, but yeah. So yeah, the pattern is kick and the open hat is off beat. It's nothing much to do. All right, let's jump into the perk. You have just, it's playing like just right after the kick. So if you have the, and it's kind of a, not a clay sound, but like the original percussion is Sounded like kind of a wood stick mixed with the clave. And in terms of process, so here you have two reverb. Doesn't ask me why, it just doesn't have any reason. It's just because I 
add one first. Then, so this bright key, it's a core preset of mine. Um, it's, if you're familiar with my video, you already know about that. I create this preset that was working well with key sound, like very in the high frequency. And so since then I'm using it a lot in everything. When I need, whenever the sound which lack a bit of, of high frequency and I feel like the saturation doesn't work enough, I use uh, this corpus. So I did it a lot of, of this template, but yeah. And then a bit of pink of delay, just to give a bit more. And here a reverb which is way much longer. So you see if I if I remove one of the or the other reverb, it kind of doesn't get the same uh, feeling. So that's why I left both. Then just I pass doesn't really do anything to be fair. I don't think it it is really necessary. But then you have these pair randoms. This is interesting the way I play that. So basically the original loop is kind of this. So it's basically some rain dropping on some metal things. And I wanted this, you can hear from time to time. So you have the rain and sometimes some you have like some big uh, drop. And I wanted to use this big drop, which are like happening randomly and use them on the percussion. So this way I would have a ra kind of random perk, but it wasn't enough random to me. So what I've done basically, I have this gate, which is gonna, here doesn't work, but if I bring the auto pan, and let me bring this actually, all right. So now what it does, if I leave like this, I have the auto pan, which is kind of modulating the volume. But I still don't want these raining things. I just want the percussive. So I've used the gate. So this way, I only have some when it's passing this threshold. So you see like this drop is only there. But the thing is, at, it's very random because the auto pan, the rage, you can see it's more like a, it's a three quarter. So it's, it's not following like eight bar, like the exact length of the sample, for example, or, or four bar. It's kind of something which is, we always like be different. And on top of that, I have as well a different kind of rain window. So this way I have this random percussion, which will always be different and never be at the same time. So it's quite hard to, maybe if I take the first one here, so then I pitch it down and into a lot of reverb. And then this is a volume variation. So they are, the, their volume change as well over time. It's not, it's never gonna be the same. It's quite, I hope you get it. It's quite hard to explain how it does, but. All right, then we have our baseline. So, for this one, so you can see you have D sharp and G, but this one is like, if you bring this octave upper, it's like plus five, five, and I bring it one octave down. I'm gonna remove the, the low pass filter just to, and And basically I use my basic bass sound. I will put the link in the description if you want to find out more. But basically it's a rack I've made to kind of create basic bass sound. And you can see here you have like two oscillator with a kind of a sotus. And here is kind of a mix between the sotus and the pure suites. They are both like blend together with a bit of the sub and they're going through a low pass filter, 24 dB. But here the trick is really, you can see there is pitch modulation on the pitch envelope. And that's really what make everything. If I remove that, it's kind of a basic bass sound. But this, applying this pitch envelope kind of creating a kind of glide. You have this room. And that's what created the old sound. Then after, if you want to find out more about the effect, I will put it in the description. There is it's nothing very interesting, to be honest. 
Alright, this is my bomb base rack. It's a rack I've made just to make things fatter. Some distortion. Bit of sidechain. And then I low pass everything because I really wanted something very subby and mono. So this way with the kick. And yeah, that's it for the bass. So let's go into the chord. So you have basically two kind of chord. You have this one where you can hear the attack is like kind of a sweeping, like a... And I use my dub chord send rack. So basically this rack, you have two things. You have one, you have this chord playing here, which is doing plus two, plus seven, plus 10. So basically I just need to press one note here, D sharp, and it's gonna automatically like kind of create plus two, plus seven, and plus 10. You get the idea. So that's the first things of the sound. And then it's operator patch. So in terms of waveform, you have three oscillator and you have the first one, which is a sawtooth. And then they are kind of a user that I've created, especially for the rack. But it's globally sounding like three sawtooths. And you can see you have very, you have a long attack. I mean long, 70 milliseconds, so that's what creating this... Uh... So this is more like a percussive classic dub chord. And that's more like a whooshy chord, I don't know how to call it. And with some filter envelope, that's what create the sound. And then after the process, again if you want to find out more, you put vocoder and dynamic tube and overdrive is mapped to this drive macro is just to add a bit of grit to your sound here you doesn't really hear it because uh, i use a lot the low pass filter so you doesn't really hear it but you can bring this one the idea you can see you have two filter you have the first one which is i'm gonna modulate during the whole track and i use this one that i bring uh, very down because I wanted more like um, this chord not to be the main chord to be like let's say the one in the background uh, the secondary like uh, not to be the main so I wanted something a bit muffled to leave space for the main chord which arrived later and this one have more like kind of a dark vibe let's say so how you play your filter as well is very important is Because you have a filter here as well, which is gonna is this one is a high pass filter, which is gonna accentuate. But according to this position and to the position of this, but this one doesn't move. But to this position of this one as well, by modulating both, you get really kind of you can really get different kind of uh, tone along the track because obviously it's always the same chord playing it's always the same sound it doesn't really change but playing with the two filter kind of always make it a chord sounding a bit different all the time and then i use my dub classic rack so this is basically a rack with two oh i forgot to activate it actually but you have this one which is a delay so this is dub delay so if you know a bit of techno you're familiar with that is basically using a delay but using the filter of the delay so this way you get this filter effect which when you use reverb make much more sense so this is with the filter without the filter you see you lose this dub vibe Then it's just ping pong three it's just because it was working well a lot of feedback a lot of draw weight because obviously this is like um and the reverb it's set this way 40 percent draw weight long gk time kind of you want to have this tail a little bit and then the way i made the rack there is a second chain with just a reverb And together it sounds like this. So again, if you want to find out more about macro and everything, I will put the link in the description. You can go and check. So high pass filter, I say just to add variation. Bright key, I just talked about it before. It's the corpus preset just to enhance the sound. And 
another bit of EQ, I will come back to it when I'm talking about mixing. And then you have the core two, which this one. So I use the same rack and the same effect, but I mean, but obviously this one sounds differently. You can see it's way much more pluckier. That's because the attack is down. So now when you go to your filter, you have something very plucky. And here you can see I'm modulating both filter. I don't have high pass filter anymore. So I'll come back to the modulation and the automation later on, but that's something very important. And yeah, the sound is basically the same. And yeah, the code is different as well. So here the code is, is just minor, a minor chord. Plus three plus seven, rather the first one you remember was plus two plus seven plus 10. So yeah, obviously it's the same rack, but you can see it sounds uh, different completely different, different envelope, different chord, and yeah. Bit of EQ, that's more mixing, I will come back to it. Same the dub. That makes everything, uh, to be honest. And bright key. So then we have Core 2 SFX. So this one is a little bit special. Uh, you can see as input, I have basically, if I bring down, I have the Core 2. So basically I'm taking as the input this Core 2 track, but pre-SFX, so which means that I won't have all of this effects chain. I just have like the instrument and basically I apply a different kind of processing. Let me show you, let me remove everything. So if I listen, you see, I just have that <coughs> and I'm going to apply my own different kind of process. It's kind of recycling and I could have used the return, basically send it in the return with a different process, but I rather. So I have auto filter, which is going to with a band pass and it's going to modulate by the LFO. So it's going to always move, make it always sounding a bit different. I have this delay. I will come back to it later. Then I have this delay, which is kind of, you can see there is 100% reverb and it kind of sounds a bit weird, but that was the point, mainly because of the reverb. Otherwise it's just a delay, but with the reverb from the echo plugin, it's kind of sounding weird. And I add another reverb to really put it a bit bigger space. So 30% around three seconds and here the thing is, if I play now, you can see they all, they play in the same time and I didn't want it that. So what I've done is I use a delay and you can see the feedback is at 0% and I put five here. So this way it's going to basically just delay the signal, but the whole signal is going to be delayed. It's not like going to be like a ping pong or like a classic delay. It's like just basically what I could have done is go here in your delay compensation and in your track delay and just like put something like this. I could have done that, but yeah, I used a delay because I, did, I don't know, it was just easier and it's the things I thought when I was scratching. So now you will hear. You first here the core two and then after the core two FX is coming a bit of time after. And this is, you can see there is automation on the volume here. It's just happening on the second chorus basically. Then we've got our pad. So pad, it's, you can see you have just D sharp as we're playing, but obviously you guess you have a chord playing. So it's plus two, plus seven, plus 10. So it's basically the same than the first chord. I'm just gonna re remove all the SFX. So that's our original sound. I'm just gonna bring the volume. So 
For pad, there is no really rules. One thing I like to do is use two square waveforms, so you have two oscillator, and which are going into the filter one, which as well are modulated by the amplitude one. And here the thing is, is I like to use square waveform to create a pad because you can play with the pulse width and you can modulate the pulse width with the LFO. This way you get something always evolving and kind of getting this sweeping feathery flangey effect by using the pulse width modulated by the LFO. So both oscillator are modulated by LFO, their pulse width, and you can see they both have different rate. So the pulse width of the oscillator 1 is modulating at a different rate than the pulse width of the oscillator 2. You can see the second oscillator is, fi is pitched 5 semiton upper. And then everything goes into a low pass filter. Uh, the filter envelope doesn't really matter, it's just for the beginning because after it stays steady. It's the same chord playing the whole track. It's pretty steady. So that's without the pulse width modulation. You can see it's pretty flat. And then you hear woo woo woo. And another one changing. So obviously you have the filter evolving along the track. I will come back to this later when I talk about the automation in the second part. Just EQ a little bit. Here the EQ is. You have these two here, you can see it's sweeping. So this is something I like to do. You take uh, a Q bell and basically you add like for example 6 dB and you just make it modulated by the LFO being sweeping and it's kind of making your sound evolve, change without really changing the tone. So that's work well. And that's work well with pad. And then after I use my pad maker rack which obviously put everything in the background, put everything in the big space. So again, if you want to find out more about this rack, uh, I will put the link in the description. There is three main things I want to talk about it that kind of shape the sound. So you have this frequency shifter with the spread here, which is kind of add a bit of stereo, but make it move as well in the same time. You can see it's going to the left and the right. And then the first main thing is the reverb, obviously a lot of dry wet, a long GK time, so you put it on the background, very hairy sound. And here I have a filtered delay, so that's really important because the fact that the delay is filtered, it's gonna create this nice vibe. You can see there is no dry, long feedback, and everything is filtered. And yeah, that's what's great rack and there's a Q mixing purple I'll come back to this next week and yeah that's pretty much it for our pad so again it's just one chord steady but you have a lot of modulation so you had one like the pan changing on the pad maker you have this LFO which is sweeping here you have the pulse width which are changing you have the filter which is modulated um, along the track. So all that, even if it's one just steady knot, kind of always make the pad interesting. All right, then we go to our ambience group. So you have three kind of ambience. So that's where I was putting the gate. So basically why I put the gate at the beginning and why I left it, it's because if I don't put the gate, you see you hear noise even if it's not playing. That's the reason because for this track to create noise, I use the noise inside the echo plugin. You see that's the echo plugin. If you go to character, you have this noise here, you can just click, select the amount and the morphing so you can get different kind of tone for your noise. And then it's some processing. So I'm just gonna remove everything. So that's our original noise. And I had vinyl distortion is gonna add some crackle. You see, I just used the crackle. It's very subtle, but erosion add a bit of noise. This is just a frequency I remove I didn't like. Overdrive kind of enhance a little bit, especially the noise. Then EQ. Frequency shifter, you see there is the LFO, so it's gonna slightly modulate the pitch of the noise, so it's kind of a very subtle.
And here again, actually, the LFO is, is there. Here again, you see you have this same sweeping uh, effect I've done. I use the EQ with the bell, bring it up 7 dB up, and then applying the LFO. So you get this sweeping effect. Auto pan, if you hear, it's kind of modulating randomly the volume a little. You see every 16, so it's like, uh, imagine you have like yeah, a kind of a rattle uh, movement. And on top of that, you have as well a slower LFO, which is modulating up and down. So this is really like to obviously make the things always evolve. You can see everything has different rates. The, all the LFO have different rates, so it will never really be the same. And yeah, that's for the first one. So I'm just gonna deactivate the gate because, and the second one, you can see it's, is basically the same process. You see, you have the noise, the vinyl distortion, overdrive. I didn't put over erosion on this one, but well, you get the idea. I'm not gonna re-explain everything one by one. This one is, you can see here you have the auto pan, which is making go from the left to the right and left. And then this auto pan is like, like a slightly changing the volume. And here you have a, auto filter because I just wanted to have this noisy, I just wanted to have a little noise going around your head. So that's the one. And then finally, but this one is, I use the rain umbrella sample. And so it's just to have an extra cracker. And yeah, well, sounding like this. So just put it mono, high pass, reverb, stereo. The thing I've done here, it's if you see if I play, you have follow action. So basically, what it was doing, I use four sample, but they will never play in the same. Uh, time so for example now it's gonna play the number two but then maybe after it's gonna play the number four you see and it's gonna randomly choose maybe the three or the one or the two again it always changes and, and pick up randomly so this this way that was it in session mode but then when i record here uh in the arrangement you can see you have like one one then two then after it goes to three go back to two then go to four four and then go back to two and it's randomly changing the noise loop. So this way you always have something different evolving along the track. Yeah, then after I've done some overall process, it's just saturation, break it to make things brighter. Overdrive to really bring a little bit more of this granular effect. And yeah, that was together. So this idea of the ambience was really like, yeah, to have like, noisy crackling ambience always evolving always going around your head during the track so that's really the backbone of the track with the pad and when you have both together you you these both things always evolving and then after building the track around that then i have some extra um drums which is our shaker here is interesting so here i use a loop which is like it's some four leaves so basically it's someone just walking into leaf you could basically record that yourself uh, I've used a, a library but and what I've done is I use the slice uh, function of the simpler in Ableton which means that all of the notes on your keyboard now have a, like a, a different sample and if you play an arpeggiator if you I could like just like play one or the other, but then if you use the arpeggiator and with a 16 rate and you play like different, you try to play different kind of chord because obviously remember that each note on your keyboard will have like a different uh, sound. So then you can try different chord and it's gonna kind of create something rhythmical. And this is really something uh, I will try to do it more in my own production as well. It's something I was experimenting on the live stream and I said, damn, that's cool. So yeah, now I can try different kind of chord and it will always kind of get something different. 
And I've just added velocities just to slightly always make change the velocity to don't have the same all the time, but just to kind of humanize your sound. And then yeah, it's just going. This is like kind of classic processing, bit of EQ. Delay, make it add a bit of movement, but make it a bit more stereo as well. Side chain and then bright keys just to make it brighter. And yeah, it's kind of kind of creating a shaker. And I have a second one here. Shaker two is different because this one is basically layering a couple of sample. And this pattern, you know, if you're familiar with my video, you know, it's like going up. Usually, I go, I, I use. Usually, I can. What I do sometimes is I put one like this, so you get something like this. But this time, I just keep the. So you can see it's crescendo, and I've just layered some open hat. So no, especially reason. You know, you layer until I got something in my head, and I layer. You know, some this one was more for the noise. This one had a bit more character. They all add something, so I keep them. There is no process, especially there are no pitch. Everything is the same, and it's just. EQ, ping pong delay, and then this bright key, I use it on almost every track. But yeah, then you have your. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with all of the elements of the track. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like the template, you can grab it, link in the description. Next week, we will talk about the arrangement, the mixing and mastering. So see you soon, guys. Bye bye.